Swinburne University of Technology. I was overseas for eight years. I, I left Australia when I finished my PhD, postdoc in America, which is pretty standard for a lot of Australians. I was at the University of Washington, and then I moved to my first academic post, which was actually at um, Sheffield University in the UK. But the time came to actually look at coming back to Australia, and the challenge then came, well, what's the right type of university for me? I'm Sally MacArthur. I'm the Professor of Biomedical Engineering here at Swinburne University of Technology. It's the engineering that underpins the way we now do biology and the way we look at medicine. It's not just about looking at the human body, it's the tools that we need to be able to get a better idea about how the body works. I'm really interested about how we can take the structure of a cell membrane and collapse it and form it on the surface of a material. So we can take molecules that are found naturally that we know have antimicrobial properties. But if we then translate that idea and take those chemicals and now attach them onto surfaces, and then we can make a bandage that maybe helps prevent you getting a bacterial infection and which messes up all your healing processes. Or we can use them um, to coat the insides of containers that are going to have food products in them and things like that. So we can step away from purely medical applications and move into food technology. We can move into also any technology where bacteria becomes a problem. If you look at something like a ship's hull, less than you know, a tenth of a millimetre thickness of bacteria on the ship's hull will slow that ship down and mean that its fuel consumption is really poor and it costs billions of dollars. If we can make a surface of material that the bacteria won't stick to, then the ships go faster, for longer, and don't have to be pulled out of the water. And that's the sort of ideas that we're bringing together here when we talk about bioengineering. Well, the key thing that attracted me to Swinburne is the fact it's a small university and they're not interested in the boundaries between disciplines. And it's really easy to walk up to somebody and say, you know about mammalian cells, do you want to come and do this project or could you co-supervise my student with me because we need to work on how these cell, this type of cell that you're the expert in sticks to the surfaces that I'm the expert of making. Obviously the other side of it is we have great facilities and even now as we're bringing together new facilities we work as teams to actually get funding for new facilities that will complement multiple groups. Swinburne's partnerships, well one of the key ones and that I'm actually really heavily involved in is the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication and that brings together six universities and CSIRO in Melbourne into a brand new building with $45 million worth of building and equipment. The reality of what we do is that we blend together different techniques. So we will start with something like a fabrication technique where we might go out to the Melbourne Centre for Nanofabrication, do some work out there where we make a nanostructured surface. We'll use a technique like nano imprint lithography, then we'll bring that back here to the lab and we might put a coating on it. So we might do a plasma polymerization, which puts a very thin layer of a specific chemistry on the surface and then we might immobilize a protein on the surface. So say this is for a diagnostic. Okay, so we need to have a capture, something that's going to pull down out of our solution the molecule I'm actually interested in. The more complicated side of things, or just a completely different side of things, is to look at the chemistry. Things that we have around the university are ellipsometry, quartz crystal microbalances and things like that that allow us to actually look at how the molecules work on a chemical level. And then we actually collaborate with other universities and CSIRO often to access other big bits of equipment. You know, these are the five and six million dollar pieces of equipment. Or we go to the synchrotron and actually analyse the chemistry of those materials as well. Industry needs people to be innovative engineers and that comes from actually having an understanding and a broader picture than, yes, I'm going to make this widget for this car. It's how could I do something new and how do I come at it in a completely new way. This has been a Swinburne production.